Hey makers, it's Charlotte with The Wooden Wit Co. And I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted. Today, Jeff and I are gonna be teaching you all about how to choose the right wick for your candle. So today we're gonna to be working with wooden wicks and we're gonna walk you through, with all the different types of wicks out there, which one is the right one for you. So with wooden wicks, you have several different types of wicks that are available. We have our crackling wicks. Those are the most popular option. They offer a robust crackling sound. We have our whisper wicks, which are quiet and offer little to no crackling sound. And we have our shaped wicks, one of which included here is our tube wick. And it's a really cool wood cylinder type wick. So Jeff, which wick do you use and why do you use that one? I use the crackling wooden wick a lot just because uh, in the area that I'm in, not a lot of people make wooden wick candles. So whenever I take these to a market, uh, they really stand out. It offers kind of a unique approach to candles in that market. Uh, and then of course the crackling that comes with it. I actually personally love the crackling. So I like having them in there. I like hearing it. And any customer that's ever come back to me says that they really like the crackling. Yeah, the crackling is a great point of difference. And if you're in an area maybe that's not as exposed mm -hmm. to wood wicks or you're in a really competitive area for candle making, Absolutely. wood wicks are a great point of difference to help set your candles apart from others. Once you've decided which type of wick you want, whether that's crackling, it's quiet, or it's a shaped wick, now we're ready to move on to match it up to a few other parameters of your candle. Jeff, what are the top two parameters that we look at when we're choosing the wick? I, when choosing the wooden wicks, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to two things really, and it's gonna be the wax that you're using. It's, uh, the wicks are gonna play a huge difference in that. You're gonna choose different wood wicks uh, based on like a soy or a paraffin or a blend. They're all gonna perform different. So you definitely wanna make sure that you get the right one so it burns properly within that wax. The second thing you wanna be concerned with is gonna be the diameter of the jar that you're going into because that will also make a big difference as far as uh, getting a full melt pool and the burn all the way through. Yes. So. Stated perfectly, basically the way that we go about choosing the right wick is first, you're gonna tell us, okay, this is the type of wax I'm using. And then we're gonna share with you guys, this is the right wick type to use. Um, certain waxes like 100% soy or more oily, hard to burn waxes require thicker wicks versus uh, an easy to burn wax like a coconut or a paraffin wax don't require as much fuel to keep them burning properly. Then next, that uh, wick width is gonna correlate exactly to your jar diameter. So the larger the jar diameter, the larger width wick you're going to need. Um, if you guys are looking for the best place to start with choosing your wick, I would highly suggest getting the wooden wick sample kit. It's gonna give you all of these wicks shown here, crackling wicks, shaped wicks, quiet wicks, and it's gonna give you a few of each so that you can properly test them. Um, which brings me to the next subject, testing really important part of Absolutely. candle making um, and something that we encourage everyone to do, whether you're making candles for yourself, for your family members, or you're selling them is to burn test your candles. Uh, Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about burn testing? I, burn testing is actually very important. And the good thing about the website and being able to go through and choose the wick uh, with the wax in the container that you're using is you can usually narrow it down to uh, within one or two wicks, usually yes. within one wick, but based on the container that you're using, uh, it can alter that just a little bit. But it's uh, real important to go through, burn those completely because uh, the melt pool at the top of the candle and the melt pool all the way down through the candle is gonna change as it burns. So for me personally, I like to go through, start it at the very top, make sure you get a nice melt pool. And then of course, I like to burn all the way through if I can, but if not, always burn down through the middle of it just because the flame and the heat that's coming off of that wood wick is gonna affect and heat up the container. And basically once that gets hot, it can alter your melt pool. So it's a good idea to, to basically burn as much as you can. Yeah, you wanna replicate the same experience, whoever is actually gonna be your end user, whether yeah. again, friend, family member, or customer, you wanna know exactly what they're gonna experience when they burn your candle. So they're most likely gonna be <laughs> burning it all the way down through, yeah. so you definitely should too. And then Jeff, uh, what about testing more than one wick size? Um, have you ever had an experience where you've had one wick burn properly and then you've had another wick that also burned well? How did you choose? Absolutely, and that's one of the things I like to try. It, one of the things I like to do is try a couple different wicks because you can stumble across that is you find a wick that burns perfect all the way through the candle. You have a nice melt pool all the way down. And then if you do get one like that, I actually like to go one size down because I found this one time where I had a candle that burned perfectly all the way through move down a wick size and it still burned perfect all the way through but it left a little bit of wax around the 
edge and as it got further down it melted that so it actually extended the life of the candle or the candle uh, probably another 10 hours that's amazing so there's a, a commonly held myth out there that candles have something called memory which means that if you have a small buildup on your candle it's going to stay there for the entire life of the candle and this is actually not true so you may start out with a small sidewall we say or wax buildup around the perimeter of your vessel and as that candle goes down further into the jar and further into the life of the candle it's going to burn hotter and it can yeah. actually remove that sidewall but it gives yeah. you a longer burn time which Definitely. is a great value add if you guys are looking for next steps once you have your sample kit we highly suggest you go to our Wick selection guide. So the Wick selection guide is available on woodenwick.com and it's a short quiz that's going to ask you which type of wick you want, crackling, quiet, or shaped, and then it's gonna ask you your wax type and your jar diameter. From there, it's going to give you recommendations on which wick to burn test, and that is a great starting point because it's basically gonna take the guesswork out of burn testing and give you guys a really <laughs> solid place to start. In addition to that, on the wick packs in the wick sample kit, the labels on each wick pack have a suggested wax companion. So that's a great tool to use too. When you have this wick sample pack, you can always just look at your bags and have a quick cheat sheet on which wax type to use them with. Definitely very helpful. In our next video, we're gonna walk you guys through A to Z, how to make a wooden wick candle. So we've covered a lot of the basics now in terms of how to select your components, what you're looking for and different qualities in waxes, fragrances, and wicks. Now we're gonna put it all together and we're so excited to make a candle with you guys. See you there.